Hello, you nice. Welcome back to the class. Today, we're going to be doing something interesting and very different from what we did before, and that has got to do with the composition. So what you're going to be focusing on is to use shapes and lines, colors, and all these interesting textures that you get from images. You're going to be using that to actually lay it out and create an interesting composition. Now, if you already forgotten what composition is, I told you guys, have a look at that word composition. That word is all I want you guys to remember, position. It's about laying things out, how well you lay things out, whether it's like a triangular composition, so your eye move from one place to another in a triangular sort of like a format, or whether it's like a circular and etc. That is composition. Now it's going to be very interesting from today because developing idea is what I want you guys to focus on. Now I have graded you guys for accuracy and also tonal shading as well. Developing idea is actually going to be another thing that we're going to be grading you guys as well. So this is going to be a really, really important task. So developing idea is really important. It's just like the practical knowledge, but how well you adapt what you have seen in most of the cases, looking at the artist work and how you can develop it yourself. As written on the instructions for you guys, it's basically about how well you can create or regenerate an artwork with your own creativity. So some of the artworks that we're going to be looking at today is made by Moholi Naji, very famous artist from the past. Now his artworks are very complex, it's really abstract looking as well. It's very difficult to understand what it is that he's talking about. For us to actually understand this work much better, what I will do for you guys is to put a YouTube link for you guys, which actually explains about Moholo Naji's works. So maybe watch that clip first and then come back to this video. So as you guys can see, his works are really abstract, but something that I want you guys to really focus on that is he uses a lot of shapes and also the lines within his work as well. But another thing that I want you guys to know is the tonal shading. If you can see, the dark area, the medium area, and the light areas, they are all divided. Just like what we have studied when we were doing some painting, what I want you guys to do is if you're making the shapes, you have to remember if you have a dark space, I want you guys to also have something light or medium right next to it. So it's all going to be different um, tones next to each other. Now today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be playing Mr. Kearney's video which explains a lot better about what I want you guys to be doing, what materials I want you guys to be collecting and what materials I want you guys to use and how to actually use it. So please watch the video very carefully, follow the instruction and gather all of the resources that I've asked you guys to gather. All right, so this is step one for the task we're going to be looking at. You've seen some examples that I have put into uh, the team there. And I'm just going to show you the things you need to gather for uh, putting this together. The first thing is to have a piece of paper, a blank piece of paper, and we want to have six squares on it. Now these squares are about seven centimeters each, and I've used a ruler to rule them. But any straight edge will do, um, as long as they're roughly that size there. Um, and just in pencil is probably the best idea, but if all you've got is a pen at home, that's fine as well. If you need to uh, use several pieces of paper to get those, um, to fit all of those on there, that's okay as well. Here are the other things you're going to need. Um, a pair of scissors, if you've got one, otherwise you can tear the paper. Uh, a glue stick is ideal, uh, but not necessary. Uh, if you don't have a glue stick, you will need a camera phone. To document some of this. Now the other thing you're going to need to do is search for some interesting images, um, some maybe a magazine that you've got so it's got some images. I'm just looking for stuff that's got interesting color in it. So there's some interesting colors in some of these that I'm going to be using. And I've also got uh, some colored paper and some patterned paper. So finding things like that that you're going to use for this, this has got some really nice color in it there. Uh, those are the things that you're going to need uh, to complete this particular exercise. All right, so this is part two of the tutorial. You can see I've cut up a whole lot of little shapes out of some of the magazines that I've had there. Some of these I've cut out um, a shape and I've kept also the part that it was cut out of because that'll be useful. Now I'm going for a combination of geometric shapes and straight lines, some torn edges and also some uh, kind of more organic shapes. 
we're not trying to cut objects out we're just getting interesting shapes with interesting colors and I'm going to show you what that might look like when you're doing the cutting so if I take this particular one here maybe I look at that red there and I'm going to use some of that by cutting a straight line through here and a straight line through here all right, so that's uh, I've got some red there and some blue that I can use uh, but equally I could look at cutting a kind of more organic shape out catching some of this white like weird kidney shaped deformity but I might also then cut out part of this or what I might call the negative space that is left behind because that might be useful as well it's an interesting unexpected shape that I might use for something so go ahead and using the magazine and the color paper etc that you found uh, cut out some interesting shapes, have a collection, you should have 20 or so pieces at least before you get started on the next step. As you can see here, I've created a kind of composition using the pieces of paper that I've cut out. It's kind of abstract, it's not of anything in particular, but I'm working to create an interesting uh, kind of pattern or composition within that square, but it's allowed to overlap the outskirts a little bit and I'm going to show you how I work while I'm doing this I'll just start with picking up what I think is a kind of an interesting starting point this one I think is quite good and then I'm just going to choose some that I think might work with it and just see how they might look and shift them around until I think I find something that I think looks good so the way around Sometimes you might find a line that kind of matches up between two things and that might look kind of pleasing. And you might find that's a useful thing to do. I've got this one here. That over the top maybe. Line those up. Try the other way around. So you're just shifting things around, seeing if you can find a composition that works. really want to use this one here so I'm going to switch it out it doesn't work with that what I want to do is put something underneath and then use the negative space that looks quite good to me so I'm going to stick some of that down you might find that once you get something that works you need to stick it down and then add to it rather than making it too complex and sticking it all trying to stick it all down at once at the end because that can get really tricky if you forget where things go now if you don't have glue what I would like you to do instead is arrange everything on the piece of paper in the frame and then use a cell phone to take a picture of it. Now I know some of you said you don't have cell phones but I'm sure you can find someone in your household who has a cell phone who will let you use it for your homework. Try that have this around. Let's go around this way now. So as long as you're documenting them, because what we're going to do with these is we are going to do some abstract painting when we get back to school. And you'll be using these as a kind of basis to make paintings from. Or at least this will be one of the ways that we develop our paintings. Looks good there. And one more piece, I think, will do it. All right, so that's my second composition. I've got four more to go. So your aim is going to be to create six different works. Now it doesn't always have to be seven centimeters by seven centimeters. If you want to make something even bigger, that is totally fine as well.
Now with the materials, as you guys can see from this example right over here, you can sort of see that it's sort of like see-through paper. So what you can do is maybe you can get some cooking paper as well, or like a transparent colored paper, and you're more than welcome to use that. Now I'm not gonna put a limit to how much pieces of paper you need to use. Don't try to use too much. Maybe you guys can use about 10 different pieces maximum. Now this is more of a simpler example as you guys can see there's more um, blank spaces. However, I want you guys to think about the backgrounds carefully. Don't just leave it as like a blank background of like a white. Yes, you can do that as well, but you can actually turn the background into like a medium tone or a dark tone using all those colors from the magazines or even newspapers, or if you've got some colored papers, you're more than welcome to use that as well. So try to create about two works each lessons, which means you guys will have three lessons to complete this. After the end of three lessons, you guys will be able to have six artworks created. Now remember, we are grading your developing of idea skills based on what you guys perform on these pieces. So make sure you um, spend really good time on this, try to come up with something really creative and go really hard. If you guys have any questions or if you wanna show me your works, make sure you guys post a photo of your work onto the class discussion. Thank you very much, year nines. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.